Hey guys, this is Camfree15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys and we are back with another One Piece anime episode review. We are finally off the freaking anime break we got because of the new year and oh my gosh. What an episode guys. What an episode. One, just the world building and the story going on in here of things that are question marks and just revelations that are just completely like blown away, which is literally going to change the One Piece world and the One Piece storyline going forward. Now, the manga people know, us anime people, we don't know the significance of how big, you know, the abolishment of the Seven Warlord system is. Like you saw the last, you know, few minutes of that episode. And then the question marks surrounding who this mysterious shaded individual, the person in that picture, apparently Sabo might be dead. Okay, and then listen, I need to speak on this now and get this out the way. Dude, if we get a reanimated type of one piece, like where they cut out some of the filler stuff like a Dragon Ball Z Kai, for example, if they want to go back and redo One Piece, the One Piece anime, give us this animation that they're giving us now and redo all the arcs, like literally, and you can stop up until like Whole Cake Island, I'll take it. Because this animation today, to, oh, well, this animation for this episode tonight, my God, it looked like something out of One Piece Stampede. The animation, some of the shots they were showing, some of the character models, the way they were looking like, was amazing. If they somehow, if Toei wants to go back and redo the anime, do a Dragon Ball Z Kai -like type of thing with One Piece, and they cut out most of the filler stuff, and they kind of keep it strictly like quick and short, like something similar to the manga in a way, where you still get, you know, these really good, well done animated fight scenes and stuff like that. And, you know, you come back, do some of these amazing arcs, get this like animation we're getting, I'm all down for it. They only show like, you know, just images of what our characters look like and other arcs in the past. And I'm like, I swear, I want this animation in almost every damn arc we've seen up to this point. This animation was amazing. Right now, it's probably the best One Piece episode in terms of purely, like, drawn animation. Again, I have to give it credit to Toei. Toei, you know, they typically get a lot of flack, but Toei, you're doing a well good damn job with this Wano arc and how you're handling the, handling the animation. And funny enough, you know, I'm over here watching freaking One Piece, and at the time when I was watching Dragon Ball Super when that was out, I'm looking at this and I'm like, so Toei couldn't give us animation like that for Dragon Ball Super? Yeah, okay. You know, I'm over here watching my My Hero Academia's One Piece. They get better animation and Dragon Ball Super comes back. They start off with this bullshit. Anyways, I'm not here to talk about Dragon Ball. I'm here to talk about One Piece. We have this One Piece anime episode 957. So this is, we we're literally going away from the storyline or from the main Wano storyline, where it seems like we're focusing on the world stuff. And then I heard that what's going to be coming up next is the Odin backstory. So anyways, we start the episode um, in the sea around the entrance to the new world. And we see Admiral Ujitora. And essentially, he was talking to this silhouette of this shaded person. Um, and he's telling him, because we all know that he wants the warlord the seven warlord system be abolished because of what happened and with you know the events of just rosa <laughs> which again i don't blame him um for having that thinking because it's like bruh we had a pirate use the warlord title to essentially take over and run a whole kingdom it wasn't until another pirate literally exposes this whole thing and it goes to show that things are going to be corrupt if this system is continuing. Um, now, this shaded person who we see, I have no fucking clue who this person is. 
It might be revealed maybe sometime after the Wano arc. So that's another thing. Oh, that's one big thing that was, you know, seen. And he, he was talking to this person in Marie was. So, okay. Anyways, we cut over to the Ryugu kingdom. And what we find out first is the reverie had actually been dismissed because it was in a great state of confusion. A week later in the Ryugu kingdom, Garp is actually with King Neptune and um, Shirohoshi and the other, um, um, and her brothers and stuff like that. And essentially they're talking about the fact, about the events of reverie and stuff like that. Now Garp says that the reverie always triggers big incidents or things happen that change the world going forward. And he goes on to the fact and explains the fact that all these different countries, they come together, but you know, just because they're agreeing on certain laws, like, you know, in real world, like a world summit here, I'm um, in the real world or, and stuff like that. The one thing he does make a mention by saying like, listen, it doesn't matter what type of country these people come from. The wealth, the religion, the poverty, they're all differences and stuff like that. And that's the one thing that won't allow each of these countries to see each other as equals and stuff like that. And, and even Gar makes a good point by saying like, yeah, if there is a chance to do it, these countries will probably, you know, stab another country in the freaking back, which let's be real, in real history, that's kind of like, honestly, no lie true and stuff like that. But Garp does mention, say like, nothing bad, even though, you know, people have those ideological thinking and those ways of these leaders in these countries and stuff like that. As long as there's like no blood spill where there's wars breaking out amongst co other countries, you know, we're good. So yeah, so I don't know if Garp is hinting at the fact that maybe we might get country wars getting started. So that's just another thing that is a hint. Um, but he also goes on to tell Neptune, listen, dude, I'm sorry I held this from you. This is what happened at the Reverie and stuff like that. So apparently we all find out some bad incident took place and something crazy happened. And apparently this incident has to do referring the Alabastan or the Alabasta Kingdom. I do not know what the hell is going on, but that's when they cut away from that and they don't talk about it again until I'm guessing they want to bring it up. I'll get into a second talking about that next thing. Now, apparently at, uh, we, we go to or cut to the World Economic Journal, which essentially seems to be a news station, like, you know, like the LA Times, like Workspace, where Big News Morgan, who we all know from Whole Cake Island and stuff like that, um, essentially, now is getting all this information that is happening from the Reverie. Apparently we found out that someone apparently was killed at the Reverie. Somebody was killed. And apparent, well, I'll get into who apparently might be killed. Um, next thing you know, this one guy comes up on um, Morgan and he's like, yo, um, here's this note from the world government. And essentially the world government is essentially saying to manipulate the information that he got about. But Morgan is like, huh, so I get a nice hefty paycheck if I do that. But then Morgan, who's a journalist and like a news person would probably do, they're getting this information. He's essentially like, yeah, that's a nice price to keep this probably on the DL. But uh, hell no, this stuff needs to get out. I am a journalist. I can do whatever I freaking want and I can write whatever I want. We later found out that person is actually a CP agent, a secret CP agent, and he's actually threatening to kill Morgan to do this. And he's like, "Listen, brother, you're doing, you're up, you're you're manipulating the information. You this cannot get out whatsoever." Again, which shows the fact that the world government is shady as shit, and they were gonna hide things from the main public so things, so big things, do not get out and get crazy and stuff like that. But Morgan eventually beats the ever-living crap out of the CP agent and stuff like that. So he does that. And essentially, um, Morgan's like, they can't stop me. I'm all, I'm gonna keep spreading out this information, this truth, because I am a journalist. And what he does is he tells his people, listen, we're relocating somewhere else. And I'm guessing they're gonna relocate somewhere else um, where the world government can't find them or, or know where their last 
known whereabouts are at and stuff like that. Anyways, once the information gets out, um, what what happens um, next is somebody comes into his office and he's like, yo, um, we're getting a call from uh, Wapple, King Wapple of Drum Kingdom. And apparently he has some information he wants to leak out. So then that's when he sees, that's when we get this news and we're like, oh, so I don't know if the news that Wapple leaked to Morgan is what we saw in the scene in the scene. Now the Revolutionary Army, we cut over there to Ivankov, Dragon, um, Koala, and some of the other revolutionaries. They're seeing the news because we also see that, you know, in this, you know, array of these people of this of the seagulls passing down the news, we see like for example this little girl looking through somebody's house. And these two, you know, adults are crying for some reason. We don't know why. And then that's when we see Dragon and the other, you know, re revolutionaries at other shocks. At the point you have Ivanka saying like, "Bro, this can't be true. This can't be true. It's the freaking World Econo Econo um, Economic Journal." We know Morgan. He likes to make some fake news and stuff like that. And it comes over to Koala. And apparently, from what we get here, be, um, is the fact that apparently it has something to do pertaining with Sabo. Now, one of the other revolutionary, I think one of the like leaders in the group, say, "Well, you know, we've we're out, we lost contact with the other revolutionaries at the reverie. Like, we cannot get in contact with them to prove out if this evidence is in factly true. So at this point, it could be who knows." This actually could be true. And they pan over to Koala and apparently she's getting really emotional and really crying and stuff like that. So one, I'm wondering, is Sabo, did, did something bad happen? Because the last time we saw Sabo, um, they were coming up with a plan to apparently, I'm guessing, take Kuma back because we found out he was revolutionary. So what? And, and then they pan over to some of the memorabilia. We go to Steli who sees this and he's shocked that Sabo was there to begin with. Um, so they won. We found out that so one, they found out that the Sabo, um, the entire world now knows that Sabo was at the Reverie, along with some other revolutionaries. So they're all shocked. But the one common trend alongside with Koala is some of the more memorable people um, from the Goa Kingdom, who we know, Makino, the, I forgot the lady who raised Luffy, Ace, and Sabo. They're all emotional and they're all crying. So there's only one of two things that are happening that's going to happen. So a Sabo got killed. That's my one guess. Sabo got killed. Two, Sabo is getting Ace's treatment. He got captured and he's going to be executed. One, this is if that's the case, because they didn't reveal anything with this apparent news is that the revolutionaries were looking at. We're all this is pure speculation. And then Two, we don't even know what the hell this Alabasta Kingdom incident is. Bro, crying out loud. And even Shirohoshi, when talking about that part, she's like, Ivi sama So, this is the interest. So, this is the crazy thing. This is the freaking crazy thing. So, like I said, point A could be Sabo's has been killed. Or point B is Sabo is getting the AIDS treatment. He's been captured. And because of him being a big time revolutionary, He's going to be executed essentially just like Ace was. Which, again, our main cast of characters, they're in Wana, which is outside, which gets nothing, you know, from the outside world. Like, literally, they know nothing. Just wait till apparently they find out this news and and Luffy finds out this news. If, if Sabo's dead, oh my goodness. He might actually have a mental breakdown, bro. He might have a mental breakdown. I'll talk about more about my thoughts about the Sabo VB and even Hancock connection um, going forward. Now, um, after this, we cut over um, to actually Blackbeard, who we see yet again, and he's like setting sail because he does not want the Navy to take something. Apparently, Blackbeard's looking to take something that the Navy wants. So, who knows what that could be is. Again, if it's freaking maybe Sabo's dead, again, the, maybe the 
you know, Mara Mara no Mi has been reincarnated. And we know Blackbeard wanted to obtain that through um, Jesus Burgess back in the Dressrosa art. So we know, we don't know. All we know is apparently Blackbeard's gonna be in the move and he's gonna, he's starting, he's gonna set sail again. So that's interesting. Anyways, we actually cut back to Wano, but it isn't our gang of lovable straw hats. We actually come across X Drake, who seems to be fine and seems not to be injured. So I'm guessing my prediction on the fact that maybe X Drake, X Drake released um, Law is probably freaking true. And we get huge, and I mean huge revelations. X Drake gets on this transponder snail and he actually calls Kobe. Yes, Kobe, the same Kobe we've known since episode one of this series. And what we find out is Kobe actually works under and Kobe, X Drake is Kobe's captain in this organization of the Navy called SWORD, which is the Navy's top secret special force. And the way Kobe was acting, it seems like this thing is like its own little secret Navy organization going on where you have maybe some Navy members who think like, cause we know this, some members of the Navy are not all that good. You know, they just take the word from the world government and they just do what the world government tells them. I'm wondering, is this like top secret organization something so different to where this Navy organization is like rebels, rebels in a way where they see that the justice they're committing is not like legit good justice because we know that there's many times the Navy has shown that they do not care about collateral damage. If it's to get, you know, people not to find out the truth, they'll kill you on the spot to, to do it. And we know there are bad, you know, types of people within the Navy force. There's some honorable people like a smoker and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if this top secret organization is completely away from the Navy because Kobe was like in his room on to himself and he was like looking over his shoulder, like making sure you no know, other people walked in understanding what was going on. So I wonder if this secret organization, Navy organization, SWORD, is something completely different and completely away from the Navy where they actually want to enact justice that is a respectable, where they look out for the people, they don't look out for themselves, and maybe even the world government. So this could be another thing, where maybe this is another section of the Navy, another, you know, force that might eventually rebel against the freaking world government because they don't like their views on where they stand. And it also shows that X Drake is a Navy man in secret, and he's essentially I wouldn't say facading as a pirate, but he kind of is facading as a pirate, getting on through the underground and understanding what's going on through like the pirate ranks and stuff like that. Again, this also shows he's probably investigating, um, he, he's investigating Kaido to see what the heck's doing. Is Kaido gonna make a move to go out to sea and maybe go at the world government, challenge the world government? And another thing is too, this, we know that Kuzan Okiji is currently with the Blackbeard Pirates. He might also be in S.W.O.R.D. doing the same thing like X Drake is doing. So he could be in the same boat. He might be a secret top member for this S.W.O.R.D. organization because he was the Blackbeard Pirates making sure to see like, okay, this is what Blackbeard's doing um, and stuff like that and giving it out to some of these members and stuff like that. So that's very huge. That's very huge. Also, it seems like some sword members to see where their loyalties lie have to essentially, I guess, say a secret code. I, for I forgot what the code, I should have put that down in my notes, but that's what it seems like they also have to do. Now, X Drake is essentially, well, first, um, Kobe tells um, X Drake that the Navy is not gonna get involved in the matters that are pertaining to Wano because they do not have enough men to be put over there. X Drake's like, well, that's okay, that's fine because listen, Wano's its own little country and we don't want to do anything. But Drake does tell Kobe about the alliance between Big Mom and Kaido. Um, we, so that is huge. Obviously Kobe now knows about this, so that's the thing. X Drake goes on to mention that he doesn't know if Luffy broke out of Udon, so obviously that's, the word hasn't traveled that, you know, he hasn't broken out of Udon. But he also does mention the fact that CP0 was in Wano, which Kobe is freaking like, what the hell are they doing there? Which again, leads to the full fact that maybe the world government 
is doing shady dealings in Wano to try to get control of Wano as well. But Co we find out where Kobe is headed at. And Kobe is actually on a ship to capture the Pirate Empress herself, Boa Hancock. And they're literally on the outskirts of Amazon, um, of Amazon Lily. And you see Marguerite and some of her fellow, you know, Amazons we saw way back near the Marine Ford saga, or the Marine Ford arc, or the Amazon Lily arc. And they see all this, and they're running back to Boa Hancock to tell her, like, um, listen, the Marines are on their way, and they're on the coast and stuff like that. And what we find out here, which is probably the biggest news of the episode, is the fact that the Seven Warlord system has been officially abolished, and it happened during the Reverie. And the people that were mostly behind this reasoning to get this abolished is King Riku, of King of Dressrosa, and King Cobra, King of Alabasta, um, and stuff like that. They were the two main people to get this you know, law enacted, and the other kingdoms like, you know what? That's a good idea. Honestly, I can't blame e either Cobra or um, Riku because, as he like the you the animation said, the Warlord system was put in place to create a three great power system and have these pirates not be outlaws anymore. What happened because of it? You had Crocodile two years ago in this story take over Alabasta. Uh, almost single-handedly take over Alabaster through Baroque, Baroque works and almost get it done. And he literally made Alabaster almost like wiped it off the map because of it. It wasn't for, until Luffy showed up or Vivi with the help of Luffy to show up and actually stop all this. He, you know, Crocodile almost took over an entire country and stuff like that. Doflamingo, he was kind of the person that did the successful route of what freaking Crocodile did. Joe Flamingo was a freaking pirate, and essentially through the warlord system he earned, he essentially was able to take over Dress Russell like we all saw, and be essentially the difference as opposed to Crocodile's events in Alabasta, he was actually able to become a ruler and do all these shitting dealings and all this stuff behind the scenes, at the same time ruining the reputation of the um, Riku family line and making their lives a living hell and stuff like that. So... I understand why both these characters wanted to be like, no, we need to have the system abolished because we not cannot have another country have the same issue where another guy does shady dealings and somehow overtakes a country and is holding them essentially by the palm of their hand and stuff like that. And let me tell you this, the animation of just that stuff and the visualization of that stuff was fucking beautiful. My God. Even some of the Doflamingo shots here was beautiful especially when they were going in depth with all the warlords and stuff like that so that was crazy um and we cut over to some scenes we see weevil getting freaking ambushed by some um navy members uh buggy gets raided um mihawks getting prepared because you know they're about to get to his little island he's on and stuff like that and essentially we get you know all the warlords focusing on each one of them separately, you know, they're, they're essentially like, okay, fine. You want to come after us? Well, then I guess we're just going to have to mess you up. And it's like Boa Hancock says, he's like, she's like, essentially, which one? Boa Hancock looks amazing. This animation on Boa Hancock looks amazing. Like, my thumbnail is the Boa Hancock scene. One, 10 out of 10, Bay. My goodness, I forgot how much I love Boa Hancock. She's hot. You cannot take Boa away from me. <gasps> but it's like Boa says at the end, she, she's like, there's a reason why they made me or made us freaking warlords. And we're gonna show them why. And that's where the episode ends off. And yeah, so the Marines are like on the move to capture these warlords and stuff like that. Kobe's going after Boa Hancock. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um. In terms of the main canon, we haven't really seen the true depths of Boa Hancock's power. Um, now, we saw a little bit of what her true depths of power is in the Stampede movie, because she literally kicked a whole, like, hole through Douglas Bullet. Like, if you saw that movie and you saw how strong the kick she gave to Douglas Bullet in his freaking armored devil fruit form with 
arm in it, hockey cutting, coating him. You saw how strong Boa Hancock is. So could, you know, Kobe be out of his league? We don't know. Now, the one interesting thing is this. Now, I think it was sometime last year, Oda Mason mentioned that there are going to be three integral characters going forward for the story. That's Vivi, Sabo, and Hancock. So I don't know if all these three characters are going to be captured by some, by some, you know, thing. Apparently, Sabo is the first one that's captured. We don't know what's going on with Vivi, but we did see the guy Emu, or Eem, um, he held up a picture at the end of the Reverie arc, a picture of Vivi. Gar did talk about incident, we're talking about the Alabaster Kingdom. So that might be something, but saying maybe the Prince of, Princess of Alabasta has been taken prisoner because maybe they find, found out that she was working. She worked for a short period of time with the Straw Hat Pirates and maybe they might execute her for her crimes, which another big thing and stuff like that. So Oda did make a mention that those three characters, um, Sabo, um, Hancock, and um Vivi might are gonna probably more than likely be integral to the future storyline of this story which my goodness I, I I have no I have no idea where this story is gonna be going when the one arc is finally done and we get more world building news all I can see is I guess we can all say when we get out of Wano and this news is revealed to Luffy and company I think we can all say we're in the end game now, folks. We're in the end game of this freaking story. And it's getting freaking intense. This episode was amazing. 10 out of 10. Right now, the best episode of One Piece of 2021. I enjoy this episode. My goodness, it seems like we're going to get something revolving on the past about Garp and Roger and stuff like that. But otherwise than that, this is a good episode and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, but the one more thing is I got to say is um, apparently... Shueisha is also copywriting, striking um, people who put up like these manga panels and stuff like that. So um, one, be careful about that. Apparently I heard it's like a bad bot, but um, maybe that might get fixed. But hey, um, be careful when posting stuff to social media because they will take your stuff down and they will give you copyright strikes. All I know is it only pertains to, you know, people in Japan, but they're copywriting stri striking like people out here on Twitter. Heck, they're even copyright strike stricken their own freaking employees because of it so i'm guessing it's just a bad bot so there's nothing really to worry about but at the same time still be careful because if you're you know gonna wonder why your account twitter account has been taken down then that's why that's all i gotta say but yeah anyways if you guys like this video leave a like put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's episode your thoughts on the theories about what this happens again do not post spoilers regarding the manga and stuff like that and that's kind of it as well as hit the su subscribe button to get more one piece content um me and my co-host red wolf who i typically do videos with on the channel um we finished our wano act one um review and um i'm gonna get that up to youtube um monday this upcoming monday so in two days so look forward to my thoughts on act one um because i honest because i didn't start reviewing the anime till like some part in act two so yeah um other than that that's kind of it so look forward to that as well as you know other things on the channel um if you like it anyways i'm gonna get it for you guys hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day and hopefully you guys are staying safe up there and you guys you know are really you know safe because especially after the events of what's going on in America. But other than that, I'm gonna gotta hope you guys have a great rest of your night. See you guys on the next video. Peace.